This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 210 of Horsemanship Radio brought to you by Hands On Gloves. The all-in-one revolutionary bathing grooming gloves. Horsemanship Radio is a part of the family of the Horse Radio Network. And today we have two interns and their instructor listening in. This is Debbie Laux, and you're listening to the Horsemanship Radio. Thanks for joining us. Horsemanship Radio airs on the 1st and the 15th of the month, and surprise, I have my producer, Glenn, with me today. Hi, Glenn. I know. It's been a while since I've been hanging out over here. You passed 200 episodes without me. I mean, you're just rocking and rolling. How do you? You're always in the background. (laughs) You're always my inspiration. Yeah, I know. Can you believe it? We're up to 210, not like 2,000. Congratulations. 50 or so. Yeah, thanks. But now, when Debbie mean, started, she said, I'll do this for a year. Um, how I many years ago was that? Did I commit to that much? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I think, oh my gosh, I think it was 2013, maybe the end of two. So we're almost 10 years? We're coming up on a 10-year anniversary. Wow, it's like, so it's so interesting. don't last that long. Yeah, yeah I know. Because <laughs> we passed by about three years what normal marriages last. <laughs> right. um, so we, the Dressage Radio Show, next week is celebrating uh, their 10 years of recent Philip being on that show. So you guys must have started about the same time. I, I guess so. You know, you don't have any point of reference at that point. But um, yeah, because I was, yeah, you're right. I was like, I don't think I have time for this. I don't <laughs> no, know how was, I'm going to do it. I said, this. just do it for a little while. <laughs> yeah, you did. You talked to me. And you said, we have to have a co-host. I'm like, I don't have anybody to be a co-host. And you go like, well, Jen, I'll talk to you. <laughs> so that was good. <laughs> she is good. normally here, but she got uh, a cold, so she can barely talk. And I said, she said, will you do this? Because you wouldn't understand her anyway. So um, yeah. I didn't even, I don't even understand what she's saying. So uh, I'm glad to be here. And right after you did the movement and I heard all kinds of good things about that from listeners who were there and Jennifer, what she could talk about, (laughs) uh, was telling me about it. Uh, She really liked the Mustang presentations, which relates to what we're going to be talking about today. So, right. Exactly. So we are having a couple of interns on here so that you get a little preview, uh, that have been working with both the OTTBs, the transition horses, and also the Mustangs that we just adopted. Plus, we've got some wild ones that from different uh, adoption partners of the Right Horse Initiative. So they, they've got their work cut out from them from morning. They start with feeding in the morning at 7 and mucking. And then as um, soon as that happens, they get out there and they start their work. And it's quiet, gentle. Um, sometimes the horses decide it might be a little exciting, but they never do. <laughs> they just don't get involved in the excitement. They just let them chill out and bring them back down. I can have Simon. I've got Simon Duenville. He is our resident instructor, and he's going to be um, over. Well, he's going to describe basically what the programs are about. So you'll get to hear a little bit about that. And then we're going to have Hollister Rosen first, and then we'll have Elizabeth Hauer, who are now in the position of being very advanced students. So I thought it'd be fun after the movement to talk a little bit about their experience with all you all who came to see them. And uh, usually we work in very quiet, solitude kind of zen around here Um, but we open up those gates and have a great time it's a big party once a year it was our fifth anniversary and i'm so glad that jen could be here and helena b and jamie jennings so many hosts from hrn and so many listeners oh my gosh we had listeners and auditors and and everybody from hrn that's so supportive and bringing their horses too it was really fun I know uh, our friend Nellie, who obviously you work with, yeah. uh, will be listening to this show. So I want to take a chance to thank Nellie because I, I fortunately was still getting over COVID and could not come out. But I the I really wanted to have my Able Skeevers that uh, is like that donut <laughs> fried thing that's so good that you guys have out there. And she she sent me a complete maker uh, along with the stuff to make them. And I can't yeah. wait to give them a try this weekend. So thank you, Nellie. Oh. Uh, you're oh, we're so happy that you got some able skivers. We were so disappointed you weren't going to get your little solving Danish pastry. <laughs> and I was fix. doing to do it every day too. I was making them drive there to pick them up. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> so you have to tell us all about. They're like a cross between a pancake and a beignet. Okay, 
Yeah, That's the way I would good. describe them. You know, good. some yeah. people put like powdered sugar on them. Remember that? And yeah. then some people stuff them with raspberry jam. She sent raspberry people... jam along. So that's <gasps> perfect. perfect. Yeah, she's that's perfect. such a good gift giver. Yeah. And she is really the inspiration behind the movement because she said, what do you want to do? And five years ago, uh, we said, how about? And she said, let's do it. And she's been the biggest encourager cheerleader and participator she's just now gotten well she, well, she saw, moved to you guys i, I mean she, she moved to solving <laughs> she moved to abel skeverville yes. <laughs> to, be with, <laughs> to be with us and her horse lou to have her horse closer to her so now her crazy job keeps her you know 24 7 in work mode but she can just slip away it's only a mile and a half or something to her home from her horse or maybe i should say from her horse to her home because <laughs> horse is more important and and she's able to just go get her horsey fix and you girls know what i'm talking about well thank you nelly thing. i really appreciated the box yeah, thanks for that very nice well, we're going to get on with this today, and let's uh, hear from Hands On Gloves first. Let me thank Jay Michelson, first of all, for putting a pair of Hands On Gloves in every VIP bag oh, that cool. happened at the movement. Isn't that the most generous thing you've ever known? And he also co-sponsored with us at the movement, Tempe and Sam coming out, too. So he kicked in for that, too, which made Tempe and Sam super happy and helped us with that whole moment, too. So. Jay Michelson, if you haven't tried hands-on gloves, you, you should. First of all, Jen tells you and admonishes you and shakes her hands-on glove finger at you all the time to try them out. Because once you try them, the two gloves that come as a set are the best. You know, we've got a little mini horse named BC now. I saw and, that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. She loves her hand on glove, too. And, you know, we can, I mean, it takes now literally two minutes to brush her down, right? I mean, she's, yeah, pretty tiny. But <laughs> but she, even around her little tiny bones or little fetlocks and everything you know they're really they're soft enough but but as jay teaches us don't tickle don't tickle your horse massage your horse and she loves it she gets her little nose on everybody's armpit you know <laughs> you're down on her level <laughs> and she's so cute but it's beautiful for do your dogs and your horses too so we're really thank you thank you thank you i jay use them on my pony all on the time them. Thank you, Jay Michelson, and everybody at Hands On Gloves. What a great team they have and how supportive they are of the equine industry. Don't go buy some, you know, other maids. Buy Hands On Gloves. Today, we have Simon Duenville on the show with us. He, of course, is our resident instructor. Some of you will know that he he has now worked for us for a couple of years as first a student and then now our resident instructor because he is certified and came through the whole program and is from South Africa. Now, that's not easy to go back and forth and get certified from, from uh, United States all the way to South Africa, but he has worked very hard to not only get his proper visas, but now he has a work visa. So we're really encouraged by that because he runs our programs, uh, which are Horse Sense and Healing, Horse Sense and Healing 2. We've got Fired Up for the firemen. We've got Partner Up for our police. And of course, we have Lead Up. And that's for our teaching leadership skills to our at-risk youth. So we will have Simon Duenville. And he's going to be on guiding us with Hollister Rosen. Hollister Rosen came to us as a student and has gone all the way through the certification program now, pa passed his advanced exams with one of our Mustang horses, Apollo, that you'll hear about. That was his project horse. And Hollister has high aspirations to work with both at-risk youth and horses for the rest of his life. Fun factoid about Hollister is his mom was a student here nearly 20 years ago when the school just began. We received our 501c3 nonprofit status in 1997 and shortly after that Hollister's mom came here to be a student and then all these years later Hollister came back to be with us and go through the student process and is hooked um, and he's very soft gentle and wonderful with the horses and he's pretty darn good with people too so we're really pleased with him and then in our second interview we have Elizabeth Hauer with Simon and Elizabeth Hauer is a writer, an actor a comedian and even a trained clown but you know what she cares about? 
She cares about horses, and that's why we love her. Her first and last love are horses, and she works for Wind Place Home uh, in near Santa Anita Racetrack down in the Los Angeles area. We found out about her because she was working with these horses that eventually came up to be retrained, these off-the-track thoroughbreds, OTTBs, with Wind Place Home. Uh, she would choose with uh, CJ is her um, the owner and the founder of Wind Place Home, and CJ and her put their heads together and so she began taking classes here and we're really proud that she has also gone through the advanced throes of our education and intends to be a certified instructor as well you will enjoy listening to these well welcome i've got simon Dionville, and i've got hollister rosen on the line how are you both of you very well thank you good to be back Yes, good. There's a chorus of guys. You know, it doesn't happen very often in the horse industry. Um, we usually have a chorus of gals. Um, so it's kind of fun to have uh, the guys on today. Uh, Simon, of course, is our resident instructor, certified instructor, and we'll add a little twist to his bio today and say that he's also a tip trainer with the uh, Mustang Heritage Foundation and doing a lot of work with BLM Mustangs, Bureau of Land Management Mustangs. And then Hollister Rosen will um, we'll have a little chat with him about our Gentling program and his internship and how far he's come along in the certification. So that'll be kind of fun. And uh, it's fun that we get to share this with Glenn, our producer today, because we rarely get on the founder of the Horse Radio Network. So, um, you know, afterward, uh, when we've got the serious business done, we'll ask Glenn a few questions, too, and see what he's learned. How about that? <laughs> I didn't know I was going to have a test today. I see, was... <laughs> now you'll pay attention. Um, <laughs> but, Simon, let's start with you. I'm, I'm excited to, for, for you to share a little bit about what's happened, even in just the last six months, with the, the Mustangs coming into our Mustang and Transition Horse program. Tell us a little bit about how um, the, the Transition program overarching is, but then get into this tip trainer thing, too. Sure. Um, well, we started the Monte Roberts Mustang and Transition Horse Program about two years ago, and we've been working quite closely with the Right Horse Initiative, um, a branch of the ASPCA. And so we've um, we've uh, brought in quite a few off-the-track thoroughbreds, and we've worked with them and, and retraining them and rehoming them, and we've been pretty su- successful up until now. And, um, well, you know, We've always wanted to bring Mustangs into the program and we just needed to find the correct channels or avenue in order to be able to get the right Mustangs so that we could um, we could work with these two and help the, the Mustang Heritage Foundation retrain and rehome or place these horses. Um, as I think uh, a lot of us know, there's over 50,000 Mm-hmm. Uh, Mustangs sitting in holding facilities at the moment, and I think uh, us as trainers, we have a responsibility to try and get these these Mustangs retrained and rehomed. And uh, fortunately, uh, we um, at the Monty Roberts Learning Center, once the the transition horse program um, was running smoothly, uh, we decided to to um, try and reach out and see if we could partner with the Mustang Heritage Foundation in order to get some of these Mustangs through the program too. So it was about six weeks ago that I was, uh, maybe six weeks to two months ago that I was approved as a tip trainer. And so now we're able to to bring Mustangs into the program, which is great. I mean, if, if you think about uh, the name for our transition program, it's not just transition horses, it's uh, the Monty Roberts Mustang and Transition Horse yeah. Program. So we we finally have have it uh, completed, and this is our first set of Mustangs that we have taken from um, the Mustang Heritage Foundation. And um, I'm sure Hollister will talk a little bit about the the training process a bit later. But uh, up until now, it's it's worked incredibly well. We have our first four Mustangs that are ready for adoption. And um, hopefully some of them will actually stay with us for further training. So we'd like to get some of these horses under saddle before we pass them on to to their new adopters. Yeah, great. Yeah. And we're very picky, aren't we, about who they they go home with, not only because you're a tip trainer and, and that there's requirements that way, but I think one of Glenn's favorite sayings is, 
green on green equals black and blue. So we know very true. <laughs> we, we know that we have to be particular about those homes that they go home to. And also, um, we want to keep everybody safe and in, enjoying horses. So positive experiences uh, all the way around. So I'm really happy about that. We love Alex Capper, who is the head honcho at the Mustang Heritage Foundation. As far as we're concerned, he's our contact there. Um, Christy Capper, his wife, is part of the Right Horse Initiative, too. So uh, we're one big happy family. And, and happy to share the knowledge that we have. Uh, Hollister, I'll bring you in here too. One of the things that we set out to do uh, beyond what we were already doing since 1997, certifying certified instructors in the Monty Roberts concepts, that means that you can teach these concepts. doesn't mean you're, you're just training horses. It also means that you're being trained up to teach. And uh, interning here means a lot to us because it is that time when you've gone – through the horse training. Now, you've been several weeks, I believe, in the actual internship program. Tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, it's been great. I have about a month and a half uh, left, hopefully, maybe two if I need it. Um, it's been a great experience. I've spent almost a year here at the ranch, and I've probably learned more in this year than I have in the last 30 years uh, there- being around horses on and off. Wow, that's a Huge statement. I appreciate that. I know you're imparting to people, too, the concepts. Is that the more difficult part of the interning, or um, is the actual working with the horses the difficult part? Um, You know, I really enjoy the one-on-one instruction. That seems to be something I truly enjoy isn't too difficult, but the group, the classes, Mm -hmm. instructing everybody one at a time, but having all of them together together. That is definitely challenging for me. However, working with the horses, I mean, it's always a challenge. You never know what you're going to get. And every Mustang is different and unique. And sometimes they go forward and sometimes they go backwards. And yeah. it's a matter of moving with them. So I think they're both equally challenging, but on very different uh, ways. Well, you have a, a wonderful way with the horses and about you, too. I hope you don't mind, but, you know, you do keep a, a bit of a running journal of working with the horses. And I thought I would share a little bit about your day by reading a little bit from that. Would you mind if I did that? Sure thing. Sounds great. Okay. All right. So both Hollister and we're also going to be talking today with Elizabeth. Keep track of the daily journaling of the daily progress of the of the horses that they work with and in Hollister's case it's often uh with the Mustangs but we we uh, he also works with the transition horses too which are most often OTTBs these days which is the off the track thoroughbred and I just picked up a little thread here that I thought would be maybe indicative of what your days are like so I'll start here when he wasn't settling and this is Wolf Wolfie When he wasn't settling, I sent him again, of which he quickly came down to a trot and came in. We did not long line. It was not the right time to do so. As it took some time to ensure I could take off his tack without a large reaction. It was hard. I had to consistently come up with ways of moving forward while preventing rearing, bolting, biting, etc., Schooling him is challenging as he is quick to rear or jump on top if too harsh. But we did accomplish it. He did not rear or bolt or jump on top of us, nor was it traumatic for him. I think that's that's your day, isn't it? A little bit or a part of it. And then the next part is it says learned. So it's what you learned. If something doesn't work, keep trying different options. If something really isn't working, it's okay to press pause when it's safe to do so and come up with another strategy. Also, there are times to push a horse forward and times to take the win. Today, we took the win of getting the surcingle on, but did not push forward into long lining. Tell us about Wolfie. Wolf is a complicated 18-hand, three-year-old thoroughbred <laughs> uh, with an amazing personality, but with a checkered history. But we're not quite sure if it's just being feral or abuse or the combination of both. Um, He is a puppy dog when you are with him one-on-one. He's a cuddler and loves to just sleep near you. I've sat in there with a book, and he's laid down next to me, and it's been great. Mm -hmm. On the other side, uh, he is incredibly reactive and fearful of just about everything and anything. 
Um, and his reactions are always to the extreme. Either it's rearing or bolting or trying to bite. Um, it's never just a slight little indication. It's always a gigantic mm-hmm. explosion with him. Um, <clears throat> now, here's another line from one of the Mustangs. So we'll use Apollo, who is a beautiful, um, maybe even Simon could tell us a little bit about choosing Apollo. But I'll I'll use your words, Hollister, long-lined. Simon helped me keeping his head to the inside. Then since then rode him. He's doing really well, yielding and moving forward. Tomorrow, I'll desensitize him to the Western saddle and begin riding him. Tell us about Apollo. Apollo is such a sweetheart. He's a love. Um, I used him for my advanced exam. I got lucky with him. But he's the he's the kind of horse uh, where he just wants to be with humans. Like he just absolutely loves getting his hair brushed and his mane done up and his tail braided and all the things. Um, he would much rather just sit with you than pretty much anything else. Um, training him has been a gem. He moves forward quickly. Um, but yeah, you know, he's still a Mustang. So if the energy goes up, he goes up with it, mm-hmm. but he really is great. And he's coming along fast. He's just, a, he's just a wonderful horse. That's great. That's great. So is it fun to have all these variety of horses that you have to work with in the internship program? That must be, well, fun is such a simple three letter word. Tell us about that. How is it to have a variety? Um, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. It's, Proud. Well, like I said earlier, it's probably the best experience and most learning experience I've had maybe to date. Um, but being able to go from a sound OTTB that is great, you know, under saddle and has pretty decent manners to a Mustang that if you touch them, they're all of a sudden across the, the, uh, the yard and yeah. trying to get away from you. Um, that variation, I mean, it's taught me more than I can even comprehend or put into words, not only just about horses, but life in general, just the whole rounded experience. So having all these different kinds of animals and horses to work with, and then people as well, um, it's taught me quite a deal uh, more than anything else. And it's given me an incredible amount of tools uh, for my belt when I do get out there and start running my own business. That's great. And that is your goal. Yeah. That is one of many. Yes. Uh, Definitely just one. I mean, if I could make a living, I would just train Mustangs all day, every day and uh, connect them to young adults that are struggling. And that would make me happier than anything. That's incredible. Is that something that's near and dear to your heart is the youth? Um, yes. Uh, Mustangs in particular are definitely my uh, my happy place as of right now in life. Um, I feel very grounded when I'm with them. And then the at-risk youth or, or struggling youth. I mean, absolutely. That that definitely has always been a part of my life since I was starting my career uh, in general. So bringing those two together, I can't think of anything that would be more satisfying and amazing for me That's moving awesome. forward. That's awesome. Uh, Simon, are you proud of this guy or what? Hmm. Words can't explain it. Mm, yeah. yeah. Well, tell we're us super a little. Proud of yeah, yeah. We're su- yeah, we're super proud of the program and uh, the the fact that we can even bring in a caliber of person like Hollister is just blows my mind all the time. Tell us about uh, what how you chose Apollo and Zeus and uh, Ajax and some of the the chosen few. The chosen few. Well, it was a bit of a negotiation with Monty and Pat. Um, <laughs> So we had to drive 12 hours up to Litchfield. Um, <clears throat> we arrived there and we went straight to the BLM. And they had about um, between 30 and 50 for us to choose from. So I think we were more focused on getting height and color. Um, obviously, we wanted to, the horses to be marketable. Um, there's a couple of small little ones running around. So, yeah, we went, we went for height and color. So we selected the top, must have been top 15 or so, based on height. And once we had those 15 um, all separated, we then started going through them and looking for confirmation, looking at the color, um, looking at the temperament, softness in the eye. And so we chose about 10 of them, knowing that we could only take four home. Mm -hmm. Uh, We were only approved for four initially. And so um, I, I chose the ones that I wanted and of course had to send the list through with videos for, for Monty and Pat Roberts. 
And uh, it was quite interesting. We, I think, I selected pretty well because we only had uh, um, we only had one or two discrepancies. So it was a bit of a negotiation between um, um, one horse and um, Apollo. So we did take Apollo because I think that was Pat's first choice. Was it was, Apollo. yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful Palomino. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, she did a really good job selecting him. He's only a three-year-old and he's got looks to die for. And, well, he, like Hollister said, he hit, a, he hit a, a real luck with Apollo because he was a real gem to work with. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then there, there was one other um, who is Orion, um, which I was given the choice to choose out of another one that uh, Pat wanted and Orion. But of course, I chose Orion because he was the biggest and, and the yeah. most powerful. So. He's fantastic. Um, He's a fantastic specimen, too. Um, it's so fun to go back in the gentling. So we just had our event, the movement, and um, you guys were showcased. The gentling pin work was showcased. How was that for you, Hollister, to have 50 blinking eyes staring around at you on the the gentling pen, which is usually pretty hidden in the back side of the farm, so that we keep it nice and quiet back for, there for the gentlers. Um, how did you How did you come out with all that? It was a It was a very new experience. I've never had to do anything quite like that. I've had to do demos and swing up and such, but not actually on TV with Monty. Mm-hmm. You know, and the whole deal. That's right. It was being. It was filmed. really great. I mean, I really enjoyed it. I always, you know, even when it's in front of camera, I always learn something from Monty. Like, he'll always just say something a little bit differently or a little bit new. And then it just makes you go, oh, okay, yeah, oh, that makes sense. Um, so it was great. It was also it was a learning experience and just a great experience overall. Good. I'm glad to hear that. You know, and we get, we're going to pull you out from behind that curtain of the gentlers and put you in front <laughs> to start doing some more teaching, too. But that was that was throwing you in the deep end with everybody, which is great. And you got to work with Jamie Jennings, who's also from Glenn's other show, The Horses in the Morning, too, the big show. How was that? Yeah. You know, I had never met Jenny, uh, Jamie on that level. I had talked to her here and there, so I knew who she, you know, who she was. And I listened to your podcast once or twice, but you know, that's, this is the first time I actually really got to to talk with her. And it's really fun to be able to, you know, kind of get knowledge out of her brain, um, ask her little questions here and there and and get a different perspective and a different take. And every instructor you talk to has a different take on every situation. And with her experience, it was just really nice to to grab hers here and there. Yeah, that's great. That's great. I love getting you guys together and brain pooling, I like to call it, where you get different ideas and get to play. But anyway, well, thank you both for taking some time out of your day. Now are you off to work with some more horses this afternoon? Every day. Hi, I'm Monty Roberts. And I'm coming to you now to talk about the Monty Roberts Online University. You know, There ought to be six months in everybody's life where they just live with their animals. I've been staying home. But three months now, I've been home with this virus thing. And the things I'm learning, we're bringing you a new series. What horses see, how horses see, and about horses seeing things. The online university is bringing you the last three years of my learning process, which I promise you, is the learningest years I ever spent. The Monty Roberts Online University. Uh, You won't miss a minute of it if you get started on it. I love bringing it to you, and it's my shot to take my concepts to the next generation. Well, welcome. I've got Simon Janville, and I've got actually our our resident clown. Not really. So it's Elizabeth Hauer on with us today, too. And we're talking a little bit about clown horses and clown people, but <laughs> we're having some fun. Elizabeth, I'm so glad to have you on. We've had you on before to talk a little bit about when plays home, but I thought we'd take a little uh, detour today and talk about what you're doing on the farm now as an intern. So what does Simon have you working on? Uh, well, you know, I can't think of a better way to spend my day. You know, we've been getting up uh, really early and working horses from about 6 a.m. till about 5 or 6 or sometimes 7 p.m., um, all in the name of becoming better uh, uh, horse men and women. 
and learning as much as we can to be, uh, you know, efficient trainers and, uh, and, and get better at spreading the word of, uh, of Monty's concepts. Mm, and very nice. Yeah. And it's a, it's not your full-time job. I know that you, you're still working at Wind Plays Home and you do Thank such you. a great job with uh, not only getting the horses to be a little chilled coming right off the track, but also rehab. Yeah. You, you get involved yeah. in a little rehab work. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, at the moment, we've got a couple of um, horses that have had an arthrodesis surgery. And mm. for anyone that doesn't know what that is, but sort of the layman explanation of it is when a horse breaks some bones in its ankle and they seize the joint um, so that it uh, no longer causes any pain. So they might always have a little hitch in their step, but they're going to be uh, otherwise just fine and wonderful companion horses. And, you know, one of them that we had last year is now going on trail, believe it or not. There you go. So, there you yeah. Go. Happy to so see you're... that journey for sure. Nice. You're saving lives and uh, yeah. yeah, one horse at a time. I love that. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. And yeah, and the, the people as well. <laughs> and people as well. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. You know, our theme that uh, horses uh, help us be happier people and um, you're really helping a lot of people adopt horses and become happier too, which is really fun. Mm-hmm. I thought I would take a, a, a moment. I hope you don't mind. I know that you keep a journal uh, for Simon and um mm-hmm. Simon, is she is she good about keeping her journal? She always has been. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Good. And Simon shared a journal with me, and I hope you don't mind if I share a little excerpt out of no, it please. for a second. Oh, good. Uh, today, I got Zeus out and long-lined him for five minutes at the walk. So this is you talking, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And to introduce what Vincennes, that's Ven is your, your rider for the day, would be looking yeah. for. Z did great, and he's only getting softer on the lines. I practiced tilting his head to the inside a few times so that once Ven got on, I was able to instruct as needed. It's not too much of a challenge for Z to keep his head at least straight, if not turned inward, just soft, soft on the reins. Z's main issue at the moment is staying on the rail while tracking left. So I had Vin sink all of his weight into the outside heel and gently use his inside leg to help balance him. It worked really well. I had Vin do some halt walks and then end with some figure eights, which helped Z figure out the turns really well. I feel... I feel quite positive about how he's set up for tomorrow. I love that. I love that. Do you, in fact, mm-hmm, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, in fact, Vincent rode him this morning. Then, so that was, I think that was from yesterday. Journey. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and this morning he did even better. Ah, there you go. Just really putting together the pieces. That's wonderful. Well, what a, it's a nice look into your day and how you work Mm. with the transition horses. How do you feel about how they're doing out in the pastures? Is it a little crazy that we turn this horses, these horses um, right off the race? Well, a few days, few months, in some cases, if they've been rehabbed, but just turn them loose in a pasture. Isn't that a little crazy? Oh, no, I can see why people might think so, but I actually think it's fantastic. You know, these race horses probably haven't been in a pasture with other horses since they were, you know, babies, really. Um, and so I think it's a great way for them to relearn um, or brush up at least that their, their uh, equus skills, the language of equus, um, which really makes the whole transition and um, uh, the, the training process or the retraining process that much easier. Mm-hmm. Um, when they understand their own language and then they understand that we are at least endeavoring to speak their language, um, everything is so much more peaceful and more efficient and um, it feels just more cohesive. Mm-hmm. What do you think your superpower is with horses? Oh, gosh. Does kissing them on the nose count? <laughs> um, it does for me. I think, <laughs> I, uh, I, I think uh, well, gosh. I think one of my superpowers is um, is honestly how much I love them. Um, I think that because of that and because uh, actually not to bring it back to my clown training, but because of that, um, I have been able to really learn how to be very present with them. You know, if they are my audience, I have to be reading them all the time and be willing to adjust myself in order to serve them. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that that those skill sets um, have crossed over really well and have served me really well with the horses. Yeah, fantastic. Simon, it's inter- are- let me jump in there. Oh, oh Jen. It's yeah. interesting that you say that because I owned an acting company for 10 years. We did improv theater. And mm-hmm. I credit all my success with podcasting and everything else I've done on my training in improv. Mm-hmm. 
So it's interesting mm-hmm. to hear you say that. Yeah, I mean, I I think you know, it, it, there's there's a lot of correlation. I think you know, for sure, and especially with the, with uh, clowning. I mean, any I think anything live for sure. But then, especially with clowning, where you're in direct communication with the audience the entire time, there's no fourth wall, and um, and so to be able to have to think on your feet and stay present. And, you know, the moment you go in your head and get distracted, you know, the show or the horse or whatever you're trying to accomplish is sort of lost. So, um, you know, being, being willing to kind of go there and share, you know, your vulnerability with the horse as well, I think is, is super important. And then of course that translates directly into, you know, teaching, teaching humans as well. Yeah, and I tell everybody, I say, I don't care what profession you're in, I don't care what you're doing, take improv classes, because the one thing you mm-hmm. do learn is how to listen, right? Um, mm-hmm, and that's mm-hmm. the skill that we need for whatever we're doing, including training horses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, well, and have a little bit of a smile along the way. You know, Ronnie yep. always says, you know, when your horse does something wrong, smile. <laughs> the moment we get too serious about it, you know, then, then we're really in trouble. So I know which kind of clown you are. You have a happy face and not a sad face. I do. I thought I so. Do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was your experience. Did you say you went to France and studied? I did. I studied with um, Philippe Collier, who um, is based, now he's based just outside of Paris, but um, he's sort of like the godfather of, uh, of clowning. And uh, I think probably his most, his most famous modern day student is um, Sasha Baron Cohen, who of course was uh, Borat and Ali G and, yeah. and all of that. There aren't too many female clowns, are there, Elizabeth? Oh, well, I'm trying to change that. Uh, <laughs> there, there, <laughs> there are, I mean, this is, we're getting into deep, to a deeper philosophical conversation about the way uh, boys and girls are, are, are taught to grow up and things mm. and who's allowed to be messy and, and all of that. But, yeah. you know, I think that, that there are an increasing, you know, I, I, I spent the last 10 years in Los Angeles and, and seeing the clown community really grow there, really since I want to say 2013 was when it first started to really um, embed there and grow. But there's been so many uh, hilarious, very, very talented female clowns um, come out of there. So it's growing. We're changing things. Good. Good for you guys. All yeah. right. Yeah. White face. This is fun. Okay. Makeup yeah. sales have gone up. That's right. <laughs> uh, well, I wanted, I couldn't let you go be without asking about the movement too. What was your impression? It was yeah. our fifth, fifth anniversary of this event. And uh, yeah. to, for people who don't know, it, our event is to share the different qualities of horses that have affected our lives in different areas. So mm-hmm. you, you've seen some of our, you've even presented at the movement before. What was this year's mm-hmm. impression? This year, you know, something about this year felt even more intimate than last year. Mm. Um, I think, you know, the fact that on the the last day, um, people could have, you know, one-on-ones with either um, Monty or Jamie Jennings or Mark Bolander and his wife, Lee. Um, it allowed people, I think, deeper access mm. um, to their heroes, so to speak. And um, particularly with Monty, you know, he, he it was one-on-one, but of course people are gathering to, you know, get as much Monty as they can. And so there was maybe five or six people gathered around and like that it was just such a beautiful sweet spot, so to speak. You know, people could ask questions and, and he could get really detailed um, with people and really personalized in his advice, which I think is really wonderful. You know, I think normally people see him on the university or see him, you know, in these big presentations where there's lots of people and it's just, Obviously, it's magical, but to have that one-on-one time, I think, is really special. Oh, great. Okay, good note on that. Thank you for next year. And uh, Simon, you must be so proud of how well your interns did, both uh, in the gentling pen and presenting with our transition horses throughout the weekend. How did that go for you with the movement? Well, it was it was really nice to be able to have uh, students or interns that I felt super comfortable um, putting them up at the forefront with Jamie, with Monty, um, with the other presenters and knowing that they would do such a good job through all the training that they've had, had here so far. So yeah, I was, I was well impressed and, um, I didn't get to see the gentling with Hollister and Jamie, but I believe it went off really well. Yeah. Um, I I was uh, fortunate enough to be paired up with Elizabeth in order to present the, the mountain trail, which was fantastic. Uh, we also had Mark there, and he got involved in in the presentation too. So it went really well. I think it was um, it was uh, everybody was 
was super pleased not only to see what the transition horses are able to accomplish out on the mountain trail, um, but also to have Mark speaking into it and Elizabeth um, as well. Um, yeah, it, it's everyone was quite amazed um, at just seeing what the transition horses are able to do. You know, we talk about bringing these horses off the track and retraining them for, for, for adoption to make them more adoptable. <clears throat> but when they see a transition horse and off the track thoroughbred that's come in three weeks ago, now go onto the mountain trail mm. and start going through all of these obstacles. I mean, it was pretty eye opening for, for all of the participants of the movement. And, uh, we had applauses all around. Mm. So it was, it was really impressive, um, for people to see just how these horses are able to adapt, um, mm -hmm. not only to just, um, the pro the, the, the work that they put in, but, uh, we also discussed the nonprofit programs that we have for veterans suffering with PTSD, um, you know, active duty law enforcement, active duty fire, uh, fire personnel. I mean, they were amazed at just how much these horses could accomplish in such a short mm -hmm. period of time. So mm -hmm. yeah, it, it, it was amazing to see how, how interested everybody was in everything that we had to offer at the movement. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, we, yeah. I'm super impressed with the horses too, and what you Simon have done, and Elizabeth, what you've done done to to get them quieter and ready for something like this, which is quite quite active you know, around the farm. Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth, what what I know there's a lot of different obstacles out there. What do you think engages the brain of the thoroughbred the most once they're out there on the mountain mm. trail? Oh, on the mountain trail. Yeah, that's what I've seen. Um, yeah. Elizabeth, you go yeah. first. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you've got, you clearly, you've got your own thoughts. Yeah. Um, I, I think that. I mean, really, I think any anything that makes them think um, is is fantastic uh, for these for these horses. But I think I want to say I think they really enjoy the water uh, quite a lot once they figure it out. Um, it, you know, I think I've seen actually I've seen all the thoroughbreds do very, very, very well. There was maybe one that was like, oh, I don't know, guys. But then once he was in, he was kind of the one that was loving it the most. Yeah. Um, so that's really fun to see them not only um, being willing to try something new and, and trust us to try something new, but then also have a good time doing it. Yeah, that, I think so, too. And and I think, Simon, you you said it out loud and it seemed to be right that if you save the water for last, it's like a celebration at the end because it might yeah. be, a right? Yeah. It's kind of a challenge. Sometimes they don't want to get their feet wet. But once they're in, they start that pawing. And the pawing is really interesting because it seems like the trigger, once they finally start a little bit of a paw, it's like, okay, now I'm ready to play. It's like there's a mm -hmm. switch that went off in their brain. They've conquered their demon. They're inside. Now let's find out what this this stuff is around my feet. <laughs> it's really cute. <laughs> what do you think, Simon? What engages their brain the most, do you think? So personally, I, I believe that the suspension bridge is, is quite yeah. a challenge, something that kind of moves under their feet. Um, mm -hmm. There's a, a bit of a technique to get them up onto the um, suspension bridge and to prepare them for the, the walk across the suspension bridge, you kind of have to break each step down in order to get them used to that. Um, so I would say the suspension bridge and then next would be the, uh, I think we call it the rolling bridge mm -hmm. that actually moves, uh, moves yeah. backwards and forwards as the horses are walking on it. So yeah, I, I would, I would say the bridges are, are, are most probably my favorites and where I find the horses are, are really thinking about it. Um, but then I'd have to second you on the water in that once they've gone through all of this mental stimulation over the bridges, um, that the water is the next best place. And mm -hmm. uh, it certainly is a reward for them um, to cool off. And you're right. And when they start pawing, then it's almost like they've, figured out that there's no sharks or eels or yeah. <laughs> anything in there. Um, <laughs> and Hippopotamus. And they start celebrating yeah. a hippo, yeah. yeah. Um, and they, once Africa. they start pawing, you see that they start licking and chewing and they start relaxing, knowing that there's nothing inside the water that's going to jump mm -hmm. out at them or bite them or whatever the case might be. Um, and that's when they start celebrating in that they've accomplished all of these obstacles and now they can actually have a bit of fun and cool down. Love it. Yeah. yeah, love it. And mm. sorry to jump in, Simon, I think you make it's just a perfect point that you make that, you know, with all these transition horses, we've talked so often about removing barriers to entry. 
um, making these transitions easier and making transition horses more accessible. And, you know, I think that one of the things that people think about off the track thoroughbreds is that they're wild and crazy and maybe they could be a fancy jumper or you know, something like this, but otherwise you can never a trail horse, never a this, never a that. And so to show them, um, be able to navigate this and, you know, it, it reason their way through a suspension bridge and a rolling bridge and the, the water box and all of that, one, shows the intelligence of the horse, but also shows, you know, the wide range of, um, of careers or skills or, or, you know, lives next that they could, that they could go into. Absolutely. Mm, Agreed. And, and the really nice thing is that, you know, daddy's putting such a lot of uh, time, effort, money and everything into um, the future of the flag is our farms or as Debbie's rebranding now the California horse center. Um, we have all of these facilities available to stimulate the horses, whether it's in arenas, smaller arenas, mountain trails, um, out rides. I mean, we have so much here at the farm that we can work with these young horses in starting them for their new career. It, it's absolutely amazing. Free ring circus. See, we'd come right back to yeah. clown. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. We we are really excited about the facility itself. Uh, we really want to change the way people think, not only about OTTBs or even about adoption of horses, uh, really get out of that rescue sort of mentality mm-hmm. and into the versatility and talents and abilities of these horses, whether they're Mustangs, they're thoroughbreds, or whether they're, I don't care what they are, um, they're horses and they enjoy playgrounds and they enjoy getting out and they enjoy movement. They enjoy being active and generous. And if, um, if we can, if we can optimize their living environment so that they their life is happier. I know all of our lives will be happier too. So um, that's that's our goal here. And I hope people come and visit. I think it'll be one of those places, those destination spots for people who want to see what a progressive Monty Roberts looks like. Uh, it's, it's not just join up anymore. It's actually taking the horse's brain and, um, and helping them uh, live a more optimized life. So I'm real excited about it. That's it. That's it, Debbie. A little bit like what the movement was titled this year, Happiness, Health, and Horses. That's right. That's right. We're staying with that theme. (laughs) Thank you guys for being, uh, thanks for being on Horsemanship Radio and thanks for sharing all that you did, not only for the last six days, but also what you've done through the whole process of becoming better students and uh, instructors for us. Whisper Listen, you don't have to say a word. It's time for Jamie Jennings to fetch an email from Monty Roberts' inbox and share a morsel of Monty's wisdom in a little segment we like to call Ask Monty. Leave this world a better place than mine. The magic in the language of the Dear Monty, I love my horse and I think my horse loves me. He follows me around already. Do I still need to do join-up? Monty's answer. Join-up is a condition that follows a logical line of communication. It is a piece of completed communication that informs the horse that you are aware of his or her language and that you understand it. It has far less to do with love than with understanding. With a few exceptions, I recommend join-up as a communication effort with every horse I work with. It builds the foundation for a mutual understanding between horse and human, which in turn results in trust and the earning of that trust. I appreciate your position that the horse already accepts you, and I understand why you would ask whether join-up is still necessary. I would suggest that when properly executed, it always helps and never has negative effects. The exceptions might be orphan foals or aggressive stallions. These constitute another subject and should be left to the professionals. What I do need to do to bring you to a greater understanding of these concepts is to explore for a moment the definition of join-up. It is not a simple acceptance of one or another by horse and human. It is far more than a simple curiosity or even a strong bond. Join up within my concepts is a procedure and something far greater than what you have described with your horse. Join up is that moment in which the horse decides that it is better to be with you than to go away. 
This is achieved, however, only after a body of work that is designed to inform the horse that you understand his language and that you are prepared to live by the principles inherent in him after millions of years during which his nature has been imprinted with certain rules. Join up in the understanding of the language of Equus are used to convince the horse through a series of carefully designed exercises that you mean no harm. Violence can play no part in this process. The horse person must live up to the trust he or she engenders. We must agree to adhere to the tenets of nonviolence or not use these principles at all. For more of these insights into good horsemanship, go to MontyRoberts.com and click on the words Ask Monty at the bottom of the page. Where in the world is Monty Roberts? Monty is looking forward to meeting some new friends, two-legged and four-legged. In July, we have July 11 through 23, the introductory course of horsemanship. And then a July 11 through 13 is the introductory course of horsemanship module one. Now, you might say, isn't that at the same time? What we've done is, is somebody can come and attend the two weeks of the introductory course of horsemanship, or you can break it up. So the 11 through 13 is module one, 14 through 16 of July is module two, 18 of 20 at through 20 of July is module three, and then 21 through 23 is the preparation for the exams, introductory course module four. See how that works? And then on the 30th, we have our ever popular Horsemanship 101. This is for the, it's a one day and it's really fun. It's for, we call it, you know, like the daughter, mother, or the girlfriend's weekend, or father, daughter, that's good too, Um, or father, son, stop that, it's not just for girls, and so then we also have uh, uh, lots more on our our website at montyroberts.com, or you can go um, look at the calendar or call at 805-688-6288. How well, about that, Glenn? Thanks for Debbie for having me here today. Appreciate it. I and of love course, you can you. go to horsemanshipradio.com where you can find all the links, photos, and more information about our guests. And we love your feedback. So follow us on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash Monty Roberts on Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash Monty underscore Roberts, and Instagram, instagram.com Monty underscore Roberts. Yes, and many thanks to our sponsors. Jay Michelson at Hands On Gloves and Monty Roberts for his MontyRobertsUniversity.com. Be sure to visit all the other great shows, too, on the Horse Radio Network at www.horseradionetwork.com. Including Horses in the Morning. Gotta horses check out that in the one. Morning. That's, right. That's got to be Glenn and Jamie. <laughs> Yay. Yes. And we have an app. It's the best way to follow that, too. So go on that and find Horsemanship Radio and Horses in the Morning and all the other great shows. And until next time, have many happy horse hours. 